ना सोल पहन दो करा Today for the 61st Foundation Day celebrations of the Regional Institute of Education, Mysuru, NCERT. At RIA Mysuru, we have a culture to balance between the science and the arts. Hence, when we plan for our guests for the function, we chose one with a science background and the other one in the arts. So here we have with us our chief guest of the day, Dr. Tessie Thomas distinguished scientist, former Director General of Aeronautical Systems DRDO and Project Director of Agni 4 Missile and Agni 5 Mission Government of India. We will have our guest of honor joining us shortly, Srimati Malavika Avinash, Indian spokesperson, a renowned film personality, a television artist and a renowned classical dancer and a noted columnist. Along with the guests, we also have Professor Y. Srikant, Principal Regional Institute of Education, Mysuru, Professor C. G. Venkateshamurthy, Dean of Instructions, Regional Institute of Education, Mysuru, and Professor Kalpana Venugopal, Head, Department of Extension Education, Regional Institute of Education, Mysuru. To begin the program with the blessings of the Almighty, may I now request all the dignitaries on the dais to raise for the institute's invocation. Also, let me call upon the invocation team to come over the dais to render the invocation. Yam shaivaha samupasate shivaiti brahmeti vedanti naha Yam shaivaha samupasate Shivaiti Brahmeti Vedanti Naha Bautaha Budhaiti Pramana Pathavaha Karteti Nayayikaha Arhan Nityata Jaina Shasanarataha Mimamsakaha Kraistvaha Kristariti Kriyapararataha Alleti Mahamadaha Soyamvo Vidadhatu Vanchita Param Trailokyanatho Harihi Thank you girls for giving an auspicious start to the program. Light has been regarded as an emblem of hope. It is also a strong symbol of enlightenment and prosperity. Lighting of the lamp symbolizes the victory of good over evil. Hence, on this auspicious day, as we are celebrating the 61st Foundation Day of the Regional Institute of Education, Mysuru, let me request the dignitaries on the dais to kindly light the lamp to make this program a blessed one.
A special thanks once again to all the dignitaries on the dais. May I now request Professor Kalpana Venugopal, Head, Department of Extension Education, Regional Institute of Education, Mysore, to formally welcome our guest for the day and also introduce her to the audience. Good morning to one and all. It is a pleasant task to welcome all gathered here on this memorable day at the Regional Institute of Education, Mysuru, as we celebrate the 61st Foundation Day of the Institute. On behalf of the principal, staff and students of the Regional Institute of Education and the DM School, I extend a warm welcome to the Chief Guest, Dr. Tessie Thomas, who is a distinguished scientist and former Director General of Aeronautical Systems, DRDO, and Project Director for Agni-4 Missile and Agni-5 Mission, Government of India. I request the principal to kindly welcome the Chief Guest. <laughs> Madam Ahati, welcome to RIE Mysore. <laughs> We also have with us the guest of honor, Mrs. Malvika Avinash, and she will be joining us shortly. It is indeed a pleasure to welcome the principal, R.I. Mysore, Professor Y. Shrikant, for the Foundation Day program today. I request the Dean of Instructions, Professor Venkatesh Murthy, to kindly welcome the principal. <laughs> sir, on behalf of all the R.I. Mysore family, we welcome you, sir. I wish to welcome the Dean of Instructions, Professor Venkatesha Murthy, also for this program. I extend a very warm welcome to the heads of the departments of education, science and mathematics, social science and humanities, and the headmaster demonstration school. I am pleased to welcome all the faculty, staff, research scholars, and students of the institute and the school on this important day of the institute. It is also a great day to have the retired faculty and staff and the alumni of RIE Mysore with us I welcome each one of you here. I wish to welcome specially all the persons of the media who are seated here from the Doordarshan and other media of Mysore. We extend a very warm welcome to all of you. We also have with us faculty and staff from the departments of NIE, NCRT, CIT and the RIEs who have joined this program online and the RI Mysore welcomes each one of you for this program. We begin the program with a very noteworthy uh, lecture that we have every year for the Foundation Day and it is known as the Sardar Panikar Memorial Lecture. Today we have with us Dr. Tessie Thomas who will be delivering this memorial lecture at RI Mysore on the 61st Foundation Day. Just to go back a little bit about this memorial lecture, the Regional Institute of Education, the then Regional College of Education Mysore, instituted the Sardar Panikar Memorial Lecture Series. It is in memory of the valuable services rendered by the late Sardar Panikar for the development of education in India and for his deep interest that he has shown in the University of Mysore as the Vice Chancellor of Mysore and also his interest in the growth of the then Regional College of Education Mysore. Kavalam M. Manikar was an Indian statesman and diplomat. He was also a professor 
newspaper editor, historian, and novelist. He was born in 1895 in Travancore, a princely state of the then British Indian Empire, and was educated in Madras at the, and at the Oxford University. He represented the country at the 1947 session of the UN General Assembly as a representative of India. He was appointed as ambassador of India to China, Egypt, and thereafter France. He played a prominent role as member of the State's Reorganization Commission of India. He also served as a member of the Rajya Sabha of the Indian Parliament and later on served as Vice Chancellor of the University of Kashmir and University of Mysore. He was a profound scholar, a brilliant intellectual and a fascinating conversationist who was down to earth and moved as a common man. It is in his memory of this luminary, the then Regional College of Education instituted the Sardar Panikar Memorial Lecture as a lecture that would be delivered on every foundation day of this institute. Madam, several eminent educationists such as Dr. V.K. Avirao, Dr. M.G.K. Menon, Dr. Raja Ramanna, Justice Saldana, Professor S.L. Bhairappa, Professor Rajiv Tarant, Dr. A.S. Kiran Kumar, Chairman Isro, Professor C.N.R. Rao, Dr. Chandrasekhar Kambara, Dr. M.K. Sridhar, Dr. J. Prakash Narayan Foundation for Democratic Reforms and others have delivered the Sardar Panikar Memorial Lectures at the Regional Institute of Education on several previous Foundation Days. And today we have with us one such luminary, Dr. Tessie Thomas, to deliver the Sardar Panikar Memorial Lecture on the 61st Foundation Day of the Institute, 1st August 2023. We welcome you again, Madam. I was quite amazed to receive Dr. Tessie Thomas, her uh, bio data. It runs into several pages. I was sharing it with Madam last evening. Uh, she's in a hurry also to go, so Madam, I'm going to make it very brief. But I would like our students to know certain prominent aspects about you. Dr. Tessie Thomas is a distinguished scientist, fellow of the Indian National Academy of Engineering and former Director General, Aeronautical Systems, Defense Research and Development Organization of India. Madam has completed her B.Tech in Electrical Engineering from Calicut University, Masters in Guided Missiles from Institute of Armament Technology, Pune, MBA in Operations Management, IGNO, and PhD in Missile Guidance from JNTU Hyderabad. She is a recipient of Doctor of Science from IIT Karakpur, IIT Kanpur, Symbiosis International Pune, and almost 19 other reputed institutions of the country. <laughs> Madam joined the Institute of Armament Technology Pune as a faculty member in guided missiles in the year 1986. She later joined DRDL Hyderabad in 1988. She was associated with Agni program right from its developmental flights. She has designed the guidance scheme for long range missile systems, which is used in all Agni missiles and underwater weapon systems. An energy management guidance scheme was designed and developed by her for the first time in the country for an all-solid propelled long-range systems for which she was conferred with Agni Self-Reliance Award in the year 2001. In her work spanning for more than 35 years, she has contributed in various fields such as guidance control, inertial navigation, trajectory, simulation and mission design, she leads a major project, sorry, she led a major project, Agni 4, as project director for a state-of-art system with many new technologies in the missile systems leading to weight and space optimization and mass fractions comparable to other missiles in the world with the development of composite rocket motor casing and advanced avionics for the first time in the country. As project director mission for the long-range Agni 5 system, she designed a guidance scheme for three-stage all-solid 
rocket system which resulted in high impact accuracy for this class of ICBM. As Director, Advanced System Laboratory DRDO, she held multi-dimensional roles and responsibilities in strategic mission planning and infrastructure developments and led the development of strategic missile systems in the country. She led the Aeronautical Systems Cluster Club Laboratories as Director General with the responsibility of design and development of state-of-the-art UAVs, manned and unmanned aircrafts, air, aerogas turbine engine technology, airborne surveillance systems, technologies and systems related to parachute and lighter-than-air systems for the armed forces of the country. Madam Tessie was nominated as first woman member in IIT Council by the President of India and Union HRD Ministry in 2014. She is also member in the Scientific Advisor Committee to the Cabinet, member of Indian National Commission for Cooperation with UNESCO, member of the Standing Committee for Promoting Women in Science in the Ministry of Science and Technology, chairperson, Board of Governors of the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, and member on the Board of Governors for National Institute of Technology, Government of India. Dr. Tessie Thomas is recipient of several honors and awards, and the list would go on today. But I'm just giving a few of them which would interest you. The DRDO Technology Leadership Award, Lokmanya Tilak National Award, DRDO Agni Award for Excellence in Self-Reliance, DRDO Award for Pathbreaking Research Outstanding Technology Development, DRDO Agni Award for Excellence in Self-Reliance, DRDO Scientist of the Year, DRDO Performance Excellence Award for Agni 4, DRDO Performance Excellence Award for Agni 5, Outstanding Woman Achiever Award in the field of science and technology by Women in Science and Technology Wise in India. Indian Women Pilots Association Award for significant contribution to women empowerment in aviation and aerospace. Missile Bhushan Sanman, Eminent Engineer Award. And the most prestigious of them all is the honor she received as First Ladies Award for the First Missile Woman of India from the Honorable President of India as Exceptional Woman who transcended all barriers to be the first in her field. It is a great honor indeed to have amongst us the missile woman today to deliver the prestigious Sardar Panikar Memorial Lecture on the 61st Foundation Day of the Institute. Let us welcome her. Madam, the stage is yours. Thank you, ma'am, for that explicit introduction given about our guests. It gives me immense pleasure and privilege to invite our chief guest, Dr. Tessie Thomas, to deliver her. Very respected principal, Professor Y. Srikant, Professor C. G. Venkatesh Murthy, Dean of Instruction, Professor Kalpana Venugopal, Head of Department of Extension Education. And I have a very good uh, alumni here from my college, Mr. Murli Dharan, 1981 badge, was surprised to get a message from him here. And all the distinguished members from the faculty and my dear students, a very good morning to all of you. Indeed, it's a proud privilege for me to come to an institution where teachers are trained. First of all, I take this opportunity to, uh, in giving me a chance to be with you on your 61st Foundation Day celebration and giving the Sardar Panikar Memorial Lecture. I don't know what to say about a function of uh, an institute, like Regional Institute of Edu Education. From my school days, 
have been hearing about NCRT. While we were traveling from Bangalore to Mysore, we were talking about that. It was only the books part which we were knowing, NCRT books in our school days, which, which is something like a total guidance to the subject. And today the institute has grown to 60, 1980, uh, uh, sorry, 1961, 61 to now, 63 uh, actually NCRT, so the year in which I was also born. So it has its uh, life as equal as mine and wonderful to be here and um, uh, Mrs. Uh, Kalpana has given an introduction about me and my journey through this, all these years has been really challenging and really educating. So much linked to the educational institutions. Be a scientist and a teacher, there is no difference. I think every moment of our life we need to learn. Every occasion, the teacher as well as the scientist has to update the knowledge. And institutions like RIE pays the foundation, the basic knowledge and how it has to be imparted to the students, the generations ahead. I think it is an institute of eminence and heritage which is imparted to the whole nation and I believe that education is the prime important factor for the development of our country and RIT is, uh, um, RIE gives that type of ambience and generates that type of rich teachers for the nation. Like any other school going students, I also gone through the school, then after the 12th, I got admission for the engineering as part of, uh, we were not in the entrance scheme, we were on the merit based. And 1985, 86 onwards, I think it uh, started the again entrance test our next batch like so uh, like it was by choice when i was taking opting for engineering itself was a strange uh, thing looked upon why this uh, girl wants to go for engineering it was never thought of and maybe uh, since in school days interested in science and mathematics, which has led me to go for this engineering as a choice of my career part. And while doing engineering in Trichur Engineering College, as part I was in the electrical uh, engineering stream, and we were given final year options to take a uh, few of the electronic subjects, like radar systems, we were told that no professor is available in that um, Trichur Engineering College. Professor from Trivandrum will come and teach as his convenience. And there's no, uh, as a course, it cannot be taught regular. But we, four, uh, five students opted for, a, for that course. And that is, uh, I feel, Choosing that subject has given me, like it is a radar systems. It's a system for sensor used for military applications to sense or track systems which is far away. So that concept of learning that system, the radar systems gave me insight into the military applications and the related uh, technology. And when uh, DRDO sponsored MTech course for choosing 10 students all across the country, I could get through as one among the 10 from all across the country for this MTech program in guided missiles, where in which I was not knowing anything about guided missiles. To be frank, without knowing much about the uh, 
topic or the curriculum what they are going to teach. Opted for it, it is curiosity to learn something which is new to this world, new to the approach that was there from childhood uh, in my mind. So that's, uh, I got to the admission at Pune and learning that subject, it's again uh, not, my at that college is the place where we could know some of the applications of the learnings. Otherwise, we have, as a science student, we have learned Newton's law without understanding the Newton's law. Or cursing the um, scientists and all, why all they were born to give us lot of laws of algorithms and uh, laws of theorems. It was really a vague concept because it registers us or it is understood to us only if it is properly explained and so and institutions of this makes the difference. The practical and the application oriented learning or teaching comes from this uh, institute. So that makes a lot of difference. Once we start understanding what we are learning, it makes a lot of difference and gets more and more motivated to do the work. So the course in the MTech in Guided Missiles gave me um, theoretical knowledge to work in our DRDO. I was posted to uh, Hyderabad DRDO lab, DRDL, where Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam was the director. Another fine uh, teacher, guru, who never taught us one-to-one uh, -one science or technology. But he was there as a director to tell us, you have done something, but do still yet to do. You have to do more. He is one person who used to encourage us as what we are and what we should aim to do. Such a noble person guiding us all through when he was a president, beyond, I think everybody knows he was a people's man who was interacting with everyone, sharing knowledge. So because of such visionary leaders in the top in DRDO, we were all streamlined to work in missile fields. And I joined with a, a degree from that background. And that was the time when I joined, it was 1985. 80 onwards, the missile programs were taken up. Five different programs for smaller missiles, the tactical missiles, Akash, uh, Prithvi, the surface to surface, then Agni was there uh, as a long range strategic nuclear capable systems. And I was uh, selected for doing the navigation and uh, guidance for this Agni class of, from Prithvi, I worked for some time and then to Agni. And uh, the task was, by then ISRO, the Department of Space has already developed the rockets for their uh, satellite launch vehicles. Uh, certain technologies are similar, but for a missile application where it has to come back to the earth and impact the designated target and whatever is the function is to be done. Whereas ISRO rockets has to take the satellite to different orbits and take it to its destination for its orbiting and doing the work. There is a technology as far as the navigation and guidance is concerned. So, and ISRO we are using uh, like liquid large motors because the size of the space constraint is not there for those type of launch vehicles. Whereas missiles for field applications, the size matters. If one kg extra additionally if we put onto the missile, we will lose a five kilometer range capability. So that way uh, it becomes difficult and handling becomes uh, more difficult. And we have designed systems to be mobi mobile, like you can carry your uh, Agni class of missiles in a truck. You won't even know the truck following your car may be a system of that nature. So that type of capability and mobility across the country is established for this class of system. So the uh, weight constraint is one thing. 
and we could think about agni class of missiles only by developing uh, the first uh, tech, there are two technologies which was very critical for agni class of reentry vehicles first one is the reentering back to the atmosphere the vehicles uh, goes through a velocity of 5 km per second you know one second you think and it the missile is as far away as 5 kilometers. That's the speed in which it is entering back to the atmosphere to hit the target. So when it is entering uh, the re-entry vehicle structure, entering back at this speed, it encounters a temperature of the order of 3000 degrees centigrade. We can't imagine 3000 degrees centigrade. It is even difficult for us to simulate and uh, test those days, 30 years before, we couldn't test the equipments for this level of temperature, atmosphere or the structure itself to qualify. But still, with the technology like composite technology we have heard about, composite uh, structures with the carbon epoxy for the uh, structural withstand and carbon phenolic for a thermal protection. The thermal protection layer will be the outer layer and inner layer with the carbon epoxy. Embedded structure which can withstand these temperatures and imagine it is only some 23 mm, mm I am talking and that much thickness outside temperature is 3000 and inside all your electronic systems, the onboard computer, the tracking and uh, racing stations, all these equipments cannot withstand more than 70 degrees, maximum 50 to 70 degrees is the operating temperature for. So a uh, technology has to be developed wherein which this materials or structures should withstand on 3000 degrees and inside should not penetrate and come to the level of 70 degrees. So that technology and uh, RVS structure with this composite materials wherein which ablation is the main technical thing which will peel off the outer layer when the temperature and doesn't allow it ablates and remains there and doesn't allow the temperature to penetrate. So with establishing that technology way back in 1990s gave us the insight into the Agni class of systems. Then came, as I mentioned, rocket uh, launch vehicles versus our uh, missile rockets. Here we need to size it down and the control systems uh, and related components has to be as compact as uh, possible. That's why we had to fieldward the operations, we had to go for a solid rocket propulsion system, wherein which I was given the task of designing a guidance scheme for solid propelled rocket motor, first of its kind in uh, technologies. But again, designing uh, the guidance algorithm was uh, to do with mathematical solutions and uh, you have to take along with you the missile traveling, you have to take the earth is rotating and you have to revolve your own head also to get the solutions. So that's the way we worked on the equations and uh, got the solution for first of its kind uh, guidance scheme for Agni class of uh, systems from the very beginning from Agni 2 onwards. Prior to Ag Agni 2 was our first system. Prior to Agni 2 we had de developmental uh, de technology demonstration vehicles uh, as Agni where we used uh, liquid propulsion technology. When in liquid propulsion we have so fuel and the oxidizer both are in liquid stage, uh, state and if you terminate one of the supply, the fuel supply valve is closed, no more fuel gets burned and no more energy gets imparted to the rocket motor to move further. So it was, that is basically the technology what was used for launch vehicles. But in solid uh, rocket propulsion system it's like a cigarette burning. It uh, starts from one end, the rocket is in ignited it uh, burns till the total propellant is burned from one end to the other end. So the total energy coming out of one propulsion system remains constant and how with uh, maybe the off nominal performance variation 
with that you have to manage and our field application is like when we say Agni 5 the launch capability today we have established is between a range capability of 3000 kilometers to 5000 kilometers so the one rocket system what is made ready can be used for a 3000 kilometers as well as for a 5000 kilometers or any range between capabilities all azimuth build means uh, we need to give only the point of uh, launch launch point coordinates latitude longitude and the height feed it into the computer and the Im impact point the target point lag long and height the missile does its own computation onboard computations of guidance and control and takes it to that 5000 kilometers away on the surface of earth anywhere 30 to 360 degrees this is the type of system we established and i was part of the guidance i was the guidance designer for this class of systems wherein with this technology establishing gave us the technical advancements in taking it to any field operations so this again uh, was my journey again what i the message i want to give is uh, we work for technologies which is unknown to us when we start challenges are many it's uh, establishing the uh, rock, uh, composite rocket motor casing when it came agni 1 2 3 was one category metallic casing rocket motors then came when we look at the world across there is a change in the uh, uh, weight of the systems so i was designated as the project director for agni 4 and i was told to modify the control systems and type of uh, complex system what is got into this agni 1 2 3 change it and look at uh, world class system why the weight difference is so much why we are not getting that type of range agni 3 we had 50 ton as the launch mass we could establish only up to 3000 kilometers so this is the task given to me as project director when i looked at it i thought one stage of the rocket motor if we changes in agni 2 things can be modified for that but it was not the game was not like that i had to finally i was given the freedom to totally relook into the configuration and change across from tip of the missile to the bottom of the missiles totally re designed and reconfigured to get an Agni 4, wherein which one of the stage of the rocket motor was composite rocket motor casing, where we got the uh, weight benefit of 40% reduction. And as I said, 1 kg weight reduction will give me a range enhancement of 5 kilometers. So with less than half the weight of Agni 3, Agni 3 was 50 ton launch mass and Agni 4 was 22 ton and we could reach a range capability of 4,000. So it is world class. And then it switched over to Agni 5. Two stages of rocket motors were changed into composite. And with 50 ton, we could achieve 5,000. So 5,000 kilometers. This is the type of technological advancements we could do over a time. And see, it is totally indigenously developed as nobody gives technologies for this class of systems. So that, is, that was a journey I gone through as project directors for Agni class of system. Then towards last five years, I came as director general of aeronautical systems, where again, I was thinking missile technology was the ultimate, ultimate technology and the toughest of uh, the technology to understand. When I took over as DG over here, I've seen, gone through the fighter aircraft, the LCA, LCA light compact aircraft, where pilot is involved. So the life of human being involved, the technologies, the redundancies, what we have to f put in was tenfold requirements. So that in my tenure, the operational clearance has happened for the LCA Tejas and it has gone into HAL for production. This five years I was also government nominee director for the HAL and now HAL started producing numbers. Already 
123, 83 present order and previously 40 more. Those many indigenous fighter aircrafts started coming to our country. Then the responsibility was again fighter aircraft, manned missions are one level, technology level, whatever the man does the operational requirements has to be converted into pilotless, that is uh, like a unmanned fighter aircrafts, which can go into the field for war operations, which can deliver weapons, missiles can be fired unmanned. So that technology we had to go through and we are in the process of developing such systems. So that was the type of role or responsibility what I could go. I was fortunate, DRDO gave me an opportunity to work in these areas and uh, it's, a, it's something like challenge the challenges what we come across in our career and that's a part of human, uh, human to get motivated further and further. So this generation, you are all fortunate, all the students who are sitting here are real fortunate ones because today the knowledge is around you. You can pick up whatever field you want. The in-depth knowledge is available to you. You can learn and learning is the only source to enhance you. It makes, learning makes a lot of difference. I would like to quote our former president APJ Abdul Kalam's words. Learning gives thinking. Thinking leads to more curious and that again Curiosity leads to more knowledge. Knowledge will lead you, make you a great person. And an regional institute of education where knowledge and guiding you through the, the learning course or how to learn, how to understand this knowledge. I think there is no better institutions we can think about. I wish the institute to grow from strength to strength and wish you all a very best on this 65th Foundation Day. Thank you for the whole effort and opportunity given to me. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing with us. We have our guest of honor, Srimati Malavika Avinash, who has joined us just now. She is an Indian spokesperson, a renowned film personality, a television artist, and a noted columnist. May I request Professor Vaish Srikanth to please welcome her. Welcome, ma'am. May I now request Professor Vaish? The most respected Dr. Tessie Thomas, distinguished scientist, Srimati Malavika Avinash, Indian spokesperson, renowned film personality, my dear colleagues, the faculty, staff, and all those who have joined online, and the media friends. It gives me immense pleasure to have you all on the 61st Foundation Day of Regional Institute of Education, Mysore, which is an integral part of National Council of Educational Research and Training, which is in turn an APEX advisory body to the Ministry of Education Government of India on school education. When it comes to the Regional Institute of Education, Mysore, on every Foundation Day on August 1st, in memory of Dr. K. M. Panikar, we celebrate our annual day. And we are very fortunate to have two distinguished personalities 
who hail from altogether different fields. One is a renowned academician and scientist, and another one a great artist. In fact, the new education policy also takes into cognizance the different areas of learning that includes not only the cognitive or knowledge domain, but also the affective psychomotor domains such as arts, aesthetics, performance arts, etc., which have an immense role to play in the lives of the students. And we have seen, especially the new education policy talks about different and various combinations which were never thought of in the Indian context before. Like we have physics with music as an option that can be taken up by a student. And mathematics and dance because rhythm is involved in both these aspects. So that is the uniqueness of this new education policy and after that NCRT and the faculty of RIE are also involved in the curriculum development. Now the syllabus and textbook development will happen over a period of time and we are all working for that. When it comes to RIE, it has produced great luminaries, not only in the form of students, but also we had very respectful teachers, teachers such as you are Anantamurti who taught English, Professor Rajiv Taranath who taught English and also a famous artist himself and Professor S.L. Bhairappa who is uh, very well known in Karnataka for his novels. And also we have students who have performed extraordinarily and exceptionally including the persons like Sadhguru who was a product of this DM school, demonstration multi-purpose multi school. And when it comes to performance, we all have this understanding that RIE has been able to produce good quality education through its students right from pre-primary to PhD. In fact, this is one unique institution where you have all levels. Normally, schools are independent of universities. You, in, universities do not have a, an understanding of what happens in the school system. Unlike that, we have here an occasion wherein the students of the school can interact with the students of the college who are doing their undergraduation and post-graduation. So this is one unique opportunity that we have. And when it comes to students, uh, recently I was looking into the statistics. We have been able to make a significant difference in the lives of the students during their four years or six years of their stay here as part of their undergraduation and post-graduation. In the sense, those students who did not perform well before were able to significantly improve their performance and this happened through their maximum scores and also the average scores that we have seen. But scores in themselves is not everything. Now the world is realizing the importance of especially the affective domain. The affective domain in fact talks about the values, the attitudes, the interests that we have which can really make a difference among the lives of not only human beings, but all those living beings on this earth. So that is something very critical and very important. In fact, education, world-renowned scholars, both in the ancient Greek and also in our Indian system, have always believed that it is of character development. It is called as ethos, ethics. It's not morality alone. In fact, when we talk of morality, morality is related to what is considered as a norm and regulated by the society through its rules and regulations. But when it comes to ethics, the character, this character building exercise, it takes a very long time. In fact, just now when a student was asking, what are we lacking? And in fact, we are lacking this. 
we are lacking this the reason because we are always self centric we think about ourselves and not about uh, the people and uh, all the living beings around and that is the reason why there is a great requirement for us to re examine our own lives in fact socrates has said that an unexamined life is not worth living in the sense we should keep examining what is the purpose of life why are we here can we make a big difference at least if not a big difference a small difference in the lives of others and at least if not a small difference can we provide something con positive to the system rather than doing it negatively that's what is the objective i think with which we should be you know working towards and also let me tell you there are two three things which are very important in our lives there is google and everything is available and accessible to everyone but there are certain subtle things which we need to understand in depth and reflect upon them and one is pleasure and the other is happiness how many of you think that pleasure and happiness is the same please raise your hands it's good that not many think on those lines except one or two so let me differentiate this pleasure and happiness when we talk about pleasure i mean it is like eating shopping and you know all other enjoyments that we have they give us pleasure and what gives happiness is like emotional stability calm contentment and a good sleep etc which we do, we lack these days and this eating shopping and maybe perhaps other kinds of addictions they lead to secretion of dopamine you know as opposed to happiness is the result of i mean when you have emotional stability and things like that serotonin is secreted so that makes the difference and pleasures can be short, of short duration and also detract our interest that's how we like one student was talking about you know what should we do in fact you should reduce dopamine levels and increase serotonin levels so then you will become a good student so let me come to the second thing and if you perhaps if you are low if you have low serotonin levels then you it will lead to depression aggression anxiety memory destruction and insomnia and many other things so that's why we should always like in in our indian system we talk about uh, meditation so meditation is one way of you know having these kinds of calmness of mind which is very important even if you are going for a war or at war with someone who is next to you so we should have uh, high serotonin levels and also let me tell you this one important fact which is very pertinent for the students we have the oxytocin levels and uh, these are biochemicals and uh, that's normally seen through the bonding of mother and child so when a mother loves absolutely unconditionally it is because of this oxytocin levels oxo oxytocin and uh, this is because there is something called as trust bonding and that is developed between individuals and or a group of people this oxytocin levels are very critical as opposed to some of the things such as testosterone or estrogen we know that when this testosterone or estrogen are secreted i mean these are also called as hormones of lust and they are produced in the hypothalamus of the brain so one interesting finding that researchers have come out with is when this is active other parts of the brain do not function 
So that means to say your reason won't function, your other affective domains don't function when this hypothalamus is very active. And that's what happens when people are in love with each other. This is not love with mother, but the love of the opposite sex. They forget about everything. Recently we have seen an incident in or a happening of this kind where, you know, the couple ignored everybody and ultimately we had to throw them off. And this was a very unfortunate situation. The reason because, in fact, you should have seen the condition of the parents and they themselves after that, they did not realize that they were in so deep and thick love with each other, they forgot the world. So that's why I tell you again, please reduce this testosterone and estrogen levels. And I mean, if you cannot increase the oxy oxytocin levels, but at least reduce these. So that's why it's very important for us. Especially I'm telling this to the students because this is the time you need to understand the, our bodily functioning in the sense how our, our organisms function and how we can be effective and productive. So, I mean, don't make your brain to take rest. Let it function. And that can only happen if you are active yourself and withdraw from all these kinds of pleasures. And when it comes to this particular institution, so it can provide facilities, it can have good transaction in the classroom, but ultimately it depends on the students. In fact, we have students who get one lakh month as a salary at the end of their BSc end or BA end, and there are also those who get 20, 30,000, which is less than the minimum of what we prescribe. This difference is created not by the institution, but by the students themselves. So that's why I always feel that students have immense responsibility. And also, someone was telling that our country is bad and like, you know, it's good in other countries. So let me remind you of the fact that that is not true. In fact, if you have seen all over, there are teenage pregnancies in Africa and in USA, the scores of the students have stagnated over a period of time for 30, 35 years. They are not improving among the schools in spite of pumping in huge money resources, etc. So let us not undermine ourselves. But at the same time, let us also not have this superiority complex that we are different from others and we can do differently. But what is important is that focus on your goals, not on WhatsApp, Facebook and many other social media and do the best that you can do and certainly you can achieve like Dr. Tessie Thomas or Srimati Malavika Avinash. So, so I am comparing in different fields. So, so this is how, you know, I think we need to strive hard and we need to, you know, look towards achieving greater goals. And finally, I just want to say one thing, especially this is because some students have raised these questions. What is stopping us? There are many things which are stopping us. I am saying only few things, like parents. Parents want, when they go to a hospital or when they go to any other facility, they would not interfere with the business. But when they come to the school, they say that you teach our children like this. And why you are not giving homework? Why you are orally teaching our children? So what happened? You did not take classes. So why, you know, outside activities are more in your school rather than having, uh, you know, classroom activities, academic work. So these are the problems and challenges that we are facing in the educational system today. Yesterday I was in Delhi and uh, the three idiots fame, Sonam Wangchuk was also there and he was telling that till grade 9, he did not have any schooling, formal schooling. His mother taught and he learnt, you know, in his mother tongue. And, you know, that's how people grow. I think let us give these opportunities, at least when you become parents, think of those things. So that's one, and then coaching. So there is coaching and we produce one thing, NCRT produces one thing and there will be 10 things in the market on the same model. So this coaching business can only be stopped by parents and 
you know, the schools. So let us work for that. And facilities, certainly we are improving. Maybe perhaps when Dr. Tessie Thomas and me, we have said it, that things might not have been the same as they are today. We have best of the you know, facilities in India, but still, when it comes to equity, still it is a question. There are a large number of schools where these are not possible. So, let us work and we can always better over what we have done yesterday. So, that responsibility lies on you and only when you examine your life, whether I am having a fruitful life, whether I am relying on pleasures or whether I am interested in happiness. So, think on those lines and certainly will be doing a great human service if we do something positive to the nation, to the community, to the society, or to the people around. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for those insightful remarks. We are about to start with the felicitations for our guests. To begin with, may I request Professor Vaishvikan, Principal R.I. Mysore, to felicitate our chief guest, Dr. Tessie Thomas, our missile woman. Thank you, sir, and thank you, ma'am. May I request Professor Shrikant to felicitate our guest of honor, Srimati Malavika Vinash. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Now we shall have a short tea break for 10 minutes. Before we break for tea, we have three more felicitations, which is a surprise element. We have uh, Mr. Bupinder from RTTC who will be felicitated now. Sri Bupender from RTTC. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Sri Krishna Prasad, our accounts officer, who will be felicitated. May I request Srimati Malavika Avinash, madam, to please felicitate him. Madam Cohen Mins, who will be felicitated by our principal, Professor Shrikan. After which we shall continue with our program where our guest of honor, Srimati Malavika Vinash, will address the gathering. We will be back in 10 minutes for the second half of the program. Fill down quickly. We are about to resume the program. To continue with our program, may I now request our guest of honor, Srimati Malavika Vinash, Indian spokesperson and a renowned film personality and a TV artist. To address the gathering, please, madam. The Kalpana Venugopal, Head Department of Extension Education, to introduce our guests.
It's almost 12, so I'll say good afternoon. Mrs. Uh, Malvika Avinash is the guest of honor for today, for the 61st Foundation Day. Uh, Mrs. Malvika Avinash uh, hails from Southern India. She's an Indian spokesperson, renowned film personality, television artist, noted columnist, and renowned classical dancer in the country. There's a lot to tell about her, and she said most of them know me, so don't embarrass me by reading uh, a lot. But there are a few things that uh, I'd just like to highlight. She's not just an artist, an actor. She has done uh, her bachelor in law from Bangalore University, and she has participated in many international moot courts as a student, and she has served as an editor of her college journal. Uh, she is also a good journalist. I don't know how many of you here read the uh, Tamil uh, column of hers in the Kumudam Tamil Weekly. Uh, there's something called as Malavika Pakkam, which is very famous. And you have the Malavika Order also in the weekly column of uh, Vijay Karnataka. She's, that's a highly acclaimed uh, column. And she's also been heading the uh, programming at Z Canada. Apart from all this, this uh, one facet of her which is very interesting and that is uh, her stint as a classical uh, dancer. Her association with Bharatnatyam commenced at the age of five. Uh, she was introduced into it by her mother and she was trained by two renowned people, M.R. Krishnamurti of Kalakshetra and Padma Shri Leela Simon, Samson. She was a recipient of the CCRT also, unit of the culture ministry scholarship for Bharatnatyam and she and her sister Ranjini Ganesh Ramesh uh, they organize the annual dance festival called Arudra at Bengaluru. Madam has also performed uh, at some of the famous dance festivals which are held at Hampi festival, the Patadakal festival, Kajuraho festival and the very famous southern festival Chidambaram Natyanjali. There's a lot more to say about her but I'll uh, it here ma'am so that we can uh, we won't embarrass you more and we'd like to hear from you so we have with us the guest of honor mrs malvika namaskara Shri Guru Bhyanamaha. What is the preferred language, English or Kannada? Okay, I hear a huge audience which says Kannada. We'll try and do a mix. And I'm Professor Helidhar Nanage, so we'll do a mix of both. Namaste and uh, it's indeed an honor to be part of this uh, 61st Foundation Day of the Regional Institute of Education and uh, it was my honor to have shared the stage with uh, Dr. Tessie Thomas who was just leaving to Ahmedabad to attend the G20 summit and therefore she had to go early. I'm also honored to be with three very eminent people in the field of education the principal of the Regional Institute of uh, Education, Shrivai Srikant, Madam Kalpana and uh, Professor Venugopal. So, I feel like a student myself, if you ask me, <laughs> to be part of this. So, I really do not know how eligible I am to be addressing this uh, August gathering because there are a lot of teachers in the audience too, not just on the dais. So, a student speaking to the teachers is uh, a difficult occasion. I will start with a verse from the Yajurveda, which I am sure a lot of you will chant along with me. Om Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bhunatu, Sahaviryam Karavavahai, 
तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिद्विषाई ओं शाति 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 The reason I recall this verse today is it is about learning. It is about knowledge. It is about two people sitting together. And the two people are the preceptor, the teacher and the student, the shishya. The acharya and the shishya both sit together and share knowledge. Because I am sure for a lot of teachers here, as much as you learnt to become a teacher as you teach you must be learning too each day is a learning experience for all of us much as you teach i'm sure as you speak to your students you must be a learning a lot more so that's what this verse is all about it's about sharing knowledge and it is about sharing knowledge to become tejasvi or enlightened it's also about sharing knowledge that does not preach hatred or violence it's about sharing knowledge that brings peace hence om shanti this is the ethos this is the civilization this is the larger bhartiya tradition that all of us are part of here the acharya is highly revered the teachers highly revered ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಗುರು ಭಕ್ತಿ ಅಂತೀವಿ ಆಚಾರ್ಯರು ಗುರುಗಳು ಅಂದರೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಬರೀ ಗೌರವ ಅಲ್ಲ ಆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಬರೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಕಾರಣ ಏನು ಅಂದರೆ ಇದೆ ಅವರನ್ನ ಎಲ್ಲವೂ ತಿಳಿದವರು ಮತ್ತು ನಮ್ಮನ್ನು ಕೈ ಹಿಡಿದು ನಡೆಸೋರು ಅನ್ನೋ ನಂಬಿಕೆ ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿದೆ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಇಥಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ನೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಫ್ರೀ there are no divisions there are no boundaries knowledge is not restricted to any one person or the other everyone is free to learn and this civilization has a recorded history of about 10000 years this e nagrikate bharatiya nagrikate adana sindhu nagrikate anta karivi saraswati nagrikate anta karivi athwa kaveri nagrikate anta karivi yavade agirli ee ottu ಈ ಭಾರತೀಯ ನಾಗರಿಕತೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ದಕ್ಕಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನುವಂತಹ ಮೂಲಭೂತವಾದ ತತ್ವವನ್ನು ನಾವು ಕಡೆ ಹಿಡಿದಿರುವಂಥದ್ದು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಶ್ರೀಕಾಂತ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕಂಪೇರಬಲ್ ಟು ಟೆಸಿ ಥಾಮಸ್ ಎಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಟೆಸಿ ಥಾಮಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೂ ಆಲ್ ಯುವರ್ ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಂಟ್ ಯು ಟು ಬಿ ರೈಟ್ ಆರ್ ರಾಂಗ್ ನನ್ನ ಮಗ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆಗಬೇಕು ನನ್ನ ಮಗಳು ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಎಂಜಿನಿಯರ್ ಆಗಬೇಕು ದೊಡ್ಡ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಹೂ ನಾನು ಅದು ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಚಿತ್ರ ಟು ಬಿ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆ ಬೇಡಪ್ಪ ಸೊ ಹಂಗಾಗಿ ವಿ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕಂಪೇರಬಲ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಹೋಪಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ದಟ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ ಓನ್ ವೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ and uh, i recall my spiritual guru who would always say especially in this relationship between the acharya and the shishya in so far as our knowledge systems are concerned in so far as the bharatiya knowledge systems are concerned which are very very old which begin with the vedas the intent is to download information if you want to know about ayurveda you go back and search if you want to know about astronomy as it was perceived right from the vedic ages you go back and read if you want to know about medicine you go back and study sushruta if you want to know about mathematics you go back and study bhaskara so this is what our knowledge systems are about about downloading information that exists and the western knowledge systems is about upgrading which iphone do you have do you have 14 or 13 or 12 or 8 or 9 so it's about upgrading each day technology changes in you upgrade so that's the vast difference between our knowledge systems and the knowledge systems that today we are all part of therefore i think it is important for us to infuse the two learning processes and art since i am an artist i think 
art comes into play in that very space. Because musically, dancely, as to marks the country and other mele, then career then depend on that. College nal nat ka maar dhuro ilwa on other mele, then career then in thoda. Unless you want to be a professional actor. I started acting at the age of nine. I was a child artist. My life has been very non-linear. I started acting as a child. Then I went back to school. I studied law. Then I came back to act. I have just allowed life to flow. But I have tried to absorb as much as I can in every sphere that I work. There is no formal teaching really for acting. There are some acting schools, but there is no formal teaching really, established teaching. And then I started to think, what is art all about? Art is about conveying my feelings, my emotions, my thoughts, my opinion. And how do I do it? I do it through a story, by telling a story. And then I thought to myself, is cinema the first storyteller of the world? It's not. Is television the first storyteller of the world? It's not. Cinema or television is the vehicle of communication, of communicating a story. So has storytelling been there in this tradition? It has. I'm sure teachers here too are far more impressive if they narrate a story while teaching than just bare teaching, you know. You go off the screen. But if there is a story involved, even in a mathematics class, then, you know, everyone sits up and listens. I'm sure this is an experience of all the teachers and the students. So storytelling is what brings us, me, you, everyone together, I think. We all are storytellers. And I thought to myself, when did this storytelling in this tradition begin? Like I said, download. So perhaps seven, eight thousand years ago, Ashwamedha Mandapa is where Rama is sitting along with a host of dignitaries and uh, Lava and Kusha, his two children, are brought to the Ashwamedha Mandapa. I'm sure you know that story of them dying on the horse. And Valmiki, who is believed to be Adikavi. Valmiki makes these two children narrate Ramayana to Rama. So Rama is listening to his own life. Like they say, biopic now. These two children narrated Ramayana to him. So this is the first instance of storytelling, recorded for storytelling. Then there is Mahabharata. This I'm sure a lot of you have seen on TV as well. So what happens in Mahabharata? During the Kurukshetra, Dharmakshetra, Kurukshetra, Samaveta, Yuyutsavaha, Mamaka, Pandavas, Chaiva, Kimakurvata Sanjaya. Dhritarashtra asks Sanjaya what is going on because Dhritarashtra cannot see. So he asks Sanjaya what is going on in the Kurukshetra battle. Mamaka, he says, of his own children and Pandava, what are all these warriors, excited warriors up to? He asks. And Sanjaya, we don't know how, has this ability to see from where he is sitting. He is able to see what's going on in the war. And Sanjaya narrates it to Dhritarashtra. Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna Yatra Partho Dhanutaraha Tattar Shri Vijayo Bhuti Dhruvaditir Matirma And then Mahabharata, the Kurukshetra battle begins. This is part of Bhagavad Gita. The reason I am narrating it is all this is recorded and this happened about 4-5,000 years ago. So this is the earliest two known instances of storytelling. So I thought to myself, alright, so Indians have been storytellers for not just centuries, but for much more. Then, how did storytelling take the form of art? Or how did storytelling itself become an artistic expression? And that's when you chance upon what is known as Bharata's Nati Shastra. See, we, like I said, cinema is about 100, 110 years old, or a little over that in the world. In India, it's about little over 100 years old. So, is there a science to the art of storytelling? 
how do you tell a story? What does it involve? It involves acting for sure. It involves singing. It involves musical instruments. It involves dialogue. It involves um, costumes, makeup. Where did all of this come from? Is there a science to it? Is there a text to it? And that's when you see Bharatas Nati Shastra as the earliest available. We do not know what was before it, but that's the earliest available textual science to what I practice today, the art I practice today. And uh, Nati Shastra is thought to be dance, a text of dance. Because Natya is believed, the equivalent of Natya in many Indian languages is dance. So everyone thinks it's dance. It's actually not. It's much more than that. The root word is nut. Nut is to act. Like you say, nata, nati, nataka. So all of this involves that root word of nut, which is to represent, which is to act. And this Nati Shastra, which was put together between, they say, the 2nd or 3rd century BCE. Do you understand BCE? Before Common Era. And CE, 2nd, 3rd century. So nobody knows exactly when it was compiled, but about 500 years is the age during which this Nati Shastra was conceived and the actual text came about. But Nati Shastra in many ways is like a bare act, that's what we say in law. It's just the, just the law is available. How do you apply it? For which many Bhashyas were written, many great people from the Indian literature, Abhinava Bhutta wrote Abhinava Bharati, then there is Sangeeta Ratnakara and there is uh, Abhinaya Darpana. There are many such texts which happen to interpret this science or this, the science of the art, if I might call that, the text of art. And like I said, Bharata's Nati Shastra is a compendium of drama, dramaturgy, if you want to call it that. It's about drama, it's about music, it's about uh, uh, Abhinaya or acting. It's about singing. So one wonders where Bharata would have found all this. Where, where did he find all this from? And where did he draw his knowledge from? Veda is more cognitive, is, is the knowledge itself. And uh, Shastra is the application of that Veda. And Nati Shastra is believed to be the fifth Veda that Brahma conceived and gave to Bharata. He apparently took literature from Rigveda, Sahitya from Rigveda, Abhinaya from Yajurveda, and music from Samaveda, and for Atharvana Veda is what Rasa is. I'll come to that a little later. I'm not going to bore you with too much of textual knowledge. I will try and make it seem applicable because. Um, my interest in this Nati Shastra, the reason for my interest is two people. One is Dr. Shatavdani Ganesh, the other is Dr. Padma Subramanian. He's a very renowned and a great artist. Dr. Shatavdani Ganesh is perhaps one of the greatest scholars of contemporary India. And uh, somehow both of them, when you read them or when you listen to both of them, it appears like cinema uses Nati Shastra the most, more than dance itself, which is believed to be the expression of uh, Bharata's Nati Shastra. Because this Nati Shastra gives two, two forms to what, what, what can be practiced. One is Margi, the other is Deshi. Margi is what applies to all of Southeast Asia. If you go towards Indonesia, if you go towards Thailand, you see a lot of Indianness in Cambodia. You see a lot of Indianness in their artistic presentation. A lot of them do Ramayana as a way. So this Margi tradition, that this is the larger text that he laid out. And subsequently, many Deshi forms came about. It's like so many languages emerging from Sanskrit. Sanskrit, if it is believed to be the mother language, then multiple languages across the country emerging from that mother language. So, Nati Shastra is the mother language of the art, and there are a lot of forms that you know. There are young people who are all trying to go off to sleep. So, one of them get up and tell me, are you aware of any dance traditions? In, in South India, do you know what they are called? One of you get a picture. Gotta, Yadar, Hesru. Mado dance, Dutti, Hesru, Yadar, Gotta. I don't want a long 
answer I am asking. I will say Bharatanatya. Do you know another form? From Andhra Pradesh. Kathakali. Kali is a theatrical form. Not so much dance, but yes, Mohini Atam is the form from Kerala. Kathak is from North India. Odissi is from Orissa. Manipuri. Satriya. Have you heard of a form called Satriya? Northeast. So these are the multiple forms. These are the Deshi forms. Now the next question is, how is this applied to films? Like I said, cinema is artistic expression. Cinema is storytelling. And knowingly or unknowingly, we use all of what Bharata talks about in cinema. And uh, I will quote, why and how I apply Nati Shastra to... Because the purpose of Nati Shastra really is uh, much more than just art. It is to enable you to evolve as a person. Professor Srikanth was talking about uh, how you should concentrate or prioritize work or education over pleasure. That you should find joy in studying rather than go after pleasure. So Nati Shastra does that. It enables you to evolve to find joy in what you do. And what is that joy? That joy is Ananda. And that joy is what you achieve when you transcend your physical pleasures. You would have heard of four Purusharthas, Dharmartha, Kama, Moksha. Nati Shastra prescribes that formula to achieve the final Purushartha. And Moksha, a lot of people believe, should happen after death. No, it should happen while you are living. That's Jivan Mukti. That is, you, you must be able to view everything from a detached space. You should be able to view everything, keeping you or I away from everything. That is true transcendence and that should happen while you are here. And how do we do it in acting? See, when I think of who I am, who am I? Malavika. Malavika was born in Bengaluru, raised in Bengaluru and Delhi and then she started acting at a very young age, then she went on to study law, then she came back to acting, then she is dabbling in politics. So this is me. And uh, I have uh, my parents who uh, gave me very good education and enabled me to evolve. I have a sister, so this is me. I have a husband, I have a child. So when I go to act, the first thing I drop is that, my own identity. I don't know how many of you have watched a film called Cyanide. Cyanide is a film about um, a group of militants who come from Sri Lanka. They were called the LPTE. They came to southern India, to Sri Perambudur and assassinated a former Prime Minister of India, Sri Rajiv Gandhi. And this cyanide was about what happened following the 15 days after Rajiv Gandhi's assassination, how they were caught. Shivarasan was believed to be the mastermind of that blast, which killed many people, not just Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, it killed a lot of others too. So Shivarasan was the guy, he was the brain behind it. And along with him, was a girl called Shubha in her 20s who was the alternate assassin in case Danu who blasted at that moment and who killed Rajiv Gandhi had failed then Shubha would have been the person who would detonate her own bomb, human bomb. So this was the story and I played Shubha. Does Shubha have anything to do with the Malavika I am? Absolutely zero, nothing at all. I don't look like her. I don't speak her language, I don't, uh, uh, I have uh, barely seen Sri Lanka, I have not gone through the childhood she did and what drove her to become an assassin. All of this is not me. So when I play a role, I drop that me and 
become that person. They call it Parakaya Pravesha. So I become the person that I am not. And when that happens, there are these spaces, which perhaps is that ananda, is that joy. When I lose my own self, become somebody else. So these are the spaces that one looks for in acting, at least I look for. I played a cop once. The name of the character was Madhavi Patel. She became very famous. And T.N. Sintaram directed me. And uh, except in the in that series, I had never seen a policeman, known a policeman. There was no police in my house. So I went to train. There was an IPS call office. I'm sure she's still in service called Malini Parthasarthi. We went and sat with her. Then I sat with uh, Subhash Bharati and trying to understand what a cop does, what an IPS officer is all about. And I'll narrate a, 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 an experience. There were many experiences while the series was being telecast. There were a lot of times when I would sit in the car and one policeman would salute. They thought I was police. Then another lady came up to me and said, Malavika, you know, law Vidya Guttu, IPS Yavad Madhukonde. This was her reaction. So this is how far that had gone. Malavika is not IPS. Malavika never studied to become a police officer, never trained to become one. So there again, the Malavika is dissolved in the identity of that IPS officer. I am just giving you as much contradictory examples as I can. One is a terrorist, the other is a cop. A lot of times we play doctor. And I haven't studied science since class 10. That was a thousand years ago I studied science. <laughs> but I play a doctor. I played a doctor recently in a film, um, which is yet to release. So then ma'am spoke of journalism. Ma'am, I only write. I never studied journalism. When um, Prashant told me to act as uh, that uh, Deepa Hegde in KGF, he said, I want you to. He is a very famous television presenter. I am sure all of you will guess who he is. I want you to be as arrogant as he is. <laughs> I am sure a lot of I don't utter his name. So, he, he, that was my brief. Watch him as much as you can. Come and do exactly what he would do. You know, he is a very famous television journalist who silences everyone. You know, and he speaks the most. And he thinks he is always right. So, this was my brief for that character I played. I didn't know anything about television journalism. There again, Malavika is dissolved into that Deepa Hegde. Another very, very different character that I played was in Grahabanga, since Dr. Bhairava was mentioned, and he has a long association with this institution. He is a revered writer, a guru of sorts for all of us. His Grahabanga is set in the 40s, and uh, his protagonist is a woman called Nanjama. Nanjama has three children, Malavika doesn't. And Malavika didn't live in the 40s. And Nanjama lost two children to plague. I don't even know what plague is, except that I've read about plague. And there was a lot of poverty, there was a lot of uh, oppression. The husband is a lazy fellow. My husband is not. In fact, <laughs> he is associated with this region. Your professor Venu Gopal was just recalling. He is associated with Manas Gangotri. Every time I enter Manas Gangotri, I think of him because every lane he'll show me and say, I did this here, I smoked a cigarette here, I sat and uh, you know discussed a play there. Uh, outside the library, we used to tease girls. So, so every lane in Manas Gangotri brings back to me a story of his, of Abhinash. So, this. This person that I played, Nanjama, had nothing to do or has nothing to do with who I am, Malavika. And therefore, Malavika dissolves into Nanjama. The reason I am giving you all these varied examples is Nanjama loses her children to play. Two children die. It's a very, it's a very gripping story. And uh, perhaps the, I think the largest number of editions of a certain novel in Kannada, at least, I think nobody is beaten by Rupa on Grahabanga. 
So such was uh, the, so therefore the pressure was also more on us. Huh? Everyone had read Kriha Bhanga when we did Kriha Bhanga. So there was so much pressure to, you know, make sure that we don't let down this great writer. And Girish Kastwadi was my character. And different directors do different things. Some teach, some don't. Like, uh, I worked with a great director called K. Balachandar. He introduced me to Tamil. And he would do exactly what is to be done in a shot. If you have to walk into a door, he would walk in, show how to stand, where to look. You just had to copy, you just had to imitate. And he would get angry if you don't do it. And he would say, Munda, 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 Varla, Munda, Varla, and all that. And then um, <laughs> TN Sitaram, for our knowledge, Sitaram was as, as uh, short tempered as KB sir. And uh, TNS also, it was a harassment of the highest order to act for him. Because you would read a certain scene and he would say, Panni, Nithkodi, Dheli, and all that. And to this day I am telling you, even if I go and act today, 20 years after I met him and I worked for him, if I go and stand and do a certain scene, he will just sit and look like that. And then say, Kirella Devra Pitvato, Matlinda Madonna Pani. Yaudu Sarila. So, and you would think, really? Am I such a bad actor? So, that's his style of working. Then Girish, of course, would say, Nivo, Namadu Tostini, other Nantara Madbadi, Tumba Katra Girith, Nivo Nimtara Madbadi. So, each director has a style. But the, what is the cause and what is the effect? What is it that I do and what is it that you take from it? And again, I will take a leaf out of Nati Shastra. Nati Shastra is about Rasa. It has 36 chapters and it has 6,000 verses. The most prominent of it is Rasa. And there are a multitude of scholars who have written extensively on Rasa. Abhinav Gupta himself writes extensively on Rasa. And if you sit down and listen to Shatavadani Ganesh about Rasa, everyone will want to be an actor. And this rasa is about that. Rasa is about bhava and rasa is about emotions and expression. And these emotions that are felt by me ought to be felt by you as the audience. So this anubhava of rasa is not just for me but for you. That's when I managed to convey. You see there are so many times when we watch a film and we are crying at the end of it. It might happen when you watch a play. When the hero is dying, you might be crying. Or when the heroine is dying, you might be crying. That's the intent of this art. To convey that rasa to you and to make sure that you feel it. There are a lot of people who, uh, you know, including my own family, who sit through Grahabhanga, forget that it's me and sit and cry along with Nanjama. My own family, it's happened. There are horror movies you watch where you are as horrified as the hero or the heroine in it. You are also scared. And Bharata talks about eight emotions. Do you want me to show them? I will show them. I will just speak briefly. Huh? Please sit. It's okay. I will stand here and do it. I will just speak briefly about these rasas. You would have heard, commonly heard the term Navarasa. But for Bharata there are only eight. The ninth one is like white light. Like you have the seven colors of the rainbow and then you have when they all merge what happens. It's a transparent color. So Bharata speaks of eight emotions. The ninth one is Shanta. Which is the first one? The first one is what Professor Srikant told you to stay away from. Shrungara. Love. The second one is Veera or valor. When you hit that six, you feel that valor, don't you? Cricket Adavaga. Nan cricket Vantila, I'm just assuming. That is valor today because you can't be brave in rumors like that. Shringara, Veera, Karuna, Karuna is compassion. Karuna is not sorrow, Karuna is compassion. What you feel for your what you feel for a lot of people. Ideally, you should feel for people also. These days, nobody feels compassion for people. At least your pets at home, I'm sure you feel that compassion. Then, there is Hasya. 
ಹಾಸ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ಲಾಫ್ಟರ್ ನಗು ಸಹಜದ ಧರ್ಮ ನಗಿಸುವುದು ಪರಧರ್ಮ ನಗುವ ಕೇಳುತ್ತ ನಗುವುದು ಅತಿಶಯದ ಧರ್ಮ ನಗುತ ನಗಿಸುತ್ತ ನಗುತ ಬಾಳುವವರ ನಿಗೆ ನೀಡು ಬೇಡಿಕೊಳ್ಳುವ ಮಕ್ಕಳು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇಮೋಷನ್ ಹಾಸ್ಯ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ವೇ ಟು ಫೀಲ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಟು ವಾಚ್ ಸಾಧು ಗೋಕಿಲ ಫಾರ್ ಫೈವ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಫ್ then there is adbhuta when you went saw that mission to mars or mission to moon that is adbhuta of surprise of wow is this possible and then there is bhaya which i spoke about fear fear of what fear of darkness ratri katral nadkondu hoga bhaya alli yavdo mulse maradalli deva idi ante right or worse than deva is a maths exam no so it thing and all or surprise and bhaya together adbhuta and bhaya that is shock when there is a surprise test and you are not prepared for it then there is gibats disgust the story of kakasura which is not known much there was a crow called kakasura who came and stung sita rama got angry and chased kakasura and he released an arrow which hit kakasura's eye and then he felt compassion that's why i said you feel compassion more often for animals then uh, bhibatsa is what rama feels for other women that's why he is ek patni vratast Rama felt bhaya. Did Rama, can God feel fear? You know what his fear was? His fear of not losing his path. What Professor Shrikanth told you. His fear of being or committing a dharma. That was his fear. To lead a dharmic life. And to not in any way stray from his path of duty. That's what we learn from Rama, the larger truth. and uh, did i leave out any what did i leave out did i leave out any rasa i don't think i did no hasya when did rama laugh he saw shurpanaka and laughed shurpanaka was ravana's sister who was typically from uh, sri lanka and uh, was not as beautiful as sita so she tries to pretend to be this shy maiden and rama laughs and laughs at her so that's the story let's see what you understand i'm going to ask questions huh this is like class only you wait i'm 
going to ask you all to do what I do.
I'm sure we all feel all of these emotions. Maybe multitude of emotions sometimes, a combination of emotions. But the ultimate intent of every artist is to convey the rasa to the audience, to make sure that the audience has that anubhuti or that experience. Before I conclude, because I think I have spoken for fairly long and I have tried to give my own art, which is a very modern one. Cinema and television are very modern arts. They, they essentially use technology to convey. But the core intent or the ethos that I come from enables me much more than any other actor or any other <clears throat> film technician, I think, across the world. Perhaps the best example of that in recent times was Avatar. No, Did you see Avatar? So, if you <coughs> watch Avatar, can you get me some water, please? If you watch Avatar closely, you will see a lot of us. Thank you. <coughs> a lot of, thank you. A lot of Bharatiya in it. Matrix also. <coughs> I don't know how many of you watch the Matrix, Keanu Reeves. A lot of scientists and mathematicians were able to relate with the matrix. <coughs> yes. <coughs> what I thought I must conclude with is that enigmatic Nataraja that you see. Nataraja is the king of dancers or the king of actors. <coughs> he is believed to be the cosmic dancer. And a lot of you would have seen that image. I urge you to recall that image. Nataraja a image Suttulu Pravavali Nenpidya. Do you remember that circle of fire? What we believe is aura. It's around him. It's around him. That circle of fire is around Nataraja. That circle of fire is believed to be the cycle of birth and death of creation and destruction. You are born, then you perish. Then you are born again. This is the Indian philosophy. Then you perish again. You perish until you achieve the purpose of this human existence, which is, I told you right in the beginning, the four Purusharthas. To transcend Artha, Kama and Dharma and to achieve Moksha. Believe me, creation of wealth which is essentially Kama and Artha, having desires is not considered sin in the Indian philosophy. You are meant to create wealth. You are meant to have desires. Nothing is believed to be bad. You have Kameshwara, the god of desires. Shiva is believed to be Kameshwara also. So desiring, accumulating wealth to be rich both in knowledge and physical wealth is not believed to be bad in the Indian ethos. What is bad is hoarding of that wealth. You are expected to circulate, to share the wealth that is created or become the trustee of that wealth for the society. You would have seen a lot of the great philanthropists of the past. They built dharmashalas, they planted trees, they they, you know, erected tanks for water, gave free food to people. So all of this you are expected to do. So do not shy or fear from being an entrepreneur. Today there is a lot of encouragement in this world for young entrepreneurship to have new ideas, to, 
uh, you know to have your own new app to create an app so many young people even under the age of 18 manage to do it so none of this is considered bad however you are expected to supersede or transcend all these desires and then achieve the bliss that enables you to come out of this cycle of birth and death then you see shiva standing as nataraja This hand is Abhay Hasta, where he grants you all that you seek, all that you desire for. It is also protection. This hand, which covers the chest, this hand suggests illusion or Maya. The great philosophers and saints of the past have believed that this entire reality that we perceive is not reality at all. There is a larger reality beyond all this. Maybe a little too much for young children. But all of this that you see and perceive, physically touch even, are all believed to be illusion. You are to break that illusion and seek that actual reality. Uh, there is a Vachana Vakka Mahadevi Kanasunda Kande where she says when I opened my when I saw Shiva I opened my eyes which is that that there is a larger reality and this is believed to be a dream state so these two hands denote that there is a hand which holds the Damaru which is meant to keep the rhythm of the world and there is a hand that holds the fire this fire could be a destructive fire this fire could be that of a yajna this fire could be the fire in your stomach don't you have fire in your stomach there are many teachers you ask you that don't you have the urge to perform so that is also fire in the stomach there is fire in the stomach that burns the food we eat also so symbolic of all of that and then he has one foot, the right foot, placed on a little demon. Go back home and Google and find that image of Nataraja. So there's a demon who's lying like that. He's Apasmara. And what is Apasmara? Darkness. Darkness. Ignorance. He stands on that ignorance or he stamps on that ignorance to provide knowledge. And there is a foot that is raised, this one. That is what we all seek. Shivan Pada Serakondro, they say, no? In common parlance, you are meant to achieve his lotus feet. Thank you. The reason I am ending with this Nataraja is because I said in India we download, but in our present day knowledge systems we upgrade. So when do you find an interface of both? In this Nataraja you find that interface of both. How can your story about creation, destruction, you know, Srishti, Stiti, Laya and all of that have anything to do with modern day science? Would be the question. There is a Nataraja that India gave the EU to keep outside their center in CERN. Have you seen it? Has anyone seen it? And there's a plaque underneath that. This is in Geneva. Modern physics, this is what is written on the plaque. This is not Malavika's imagination. Modern physics has revealed that every subatomic particle not only performs an energy dance, Shiva is believed to do the Ananda Tandava. He is believed to be the cosmic dancer. So modern physics has revealed that every subatomic particle not only performs an energy dance, but also is an energy dance. 
For students of science, I think you will understand it better. I not so much. I'd like to see it as Nataraja only. A pulsating process of creation and destruction. The entire universe is then engaged in movement and endless activity in an uninterrupted cosmic dance of energy. Where do you find this in Nati Shastra? Dr. Padma Subramaniam, I told you, she is the lady who led me to this text. She speaks of the Karanas. She is very famous for delineating the Karanas. Karanas <clears throat> were believed to be postures. Till she interpreted them, they were believed to be postures. <coughs> I told you, India, in a country like India, centuries coexist. You have a Beluru and a Halebidu of the 11th century. You also have an Isro. You have a Terry Thomas from DRDO. <coughs> centuries coexist in this country. Physically also. And these Karanas are found in temples. She found them in Chidambaram in uh, Kumbakonam, where these postures were sculpted in the temple gopuras and on the walls of the temples. They were taken from the Nati Shastra because every verse from the Nati Shastra was sculpted underneath the sculptures she saw. <coughs> then she started wondering if these are just images or sculptures, static postures or is there a movement involved. She realized that those postures are like a camera capturing one of the moments during the process of a performance. So that's how she delineated the Karanas and she speaks of a Karana called Bhujangatrasita which lands you in that Nataraja posture. So this is the larger context. I believe that we as students, as learners, as learners seeking eternal knowledge not just while in school, while in college, but constantly while you're working, perhaps while you're teaching, while you're driving, while every moment is a learning. There's something you gain from this world at every moment that is spent in this world. So as learners, we are to assimilate both. I think that's what the NEP is trying to do. And we are to assimilate the existing knowledge systems that have come down centuries because you will find it strange when I was reading about the Nati Shastra and I told you about Abhinav Gupta. Abhinav Gupta lived in Kashmir. Kashmir. Panini is also from Kashmir, the great uh, grammatician. So Abhinav Gupta was writing this thesis or Bhashya on Nati Shastra in the 11th century around about the same time as Raja Raja Chola was building the Brihadishwara temple in Tanjavur. They are not even remotely connected physically. And then I thought, oh, wasn't it the same time that Beluru and Halebidu, Halebidu got uh, constructed in Karnataka by Vishnu Vardhana, the Hoysala king, and his wife was a great dancer, Shantara. So what is it that connects this nation? If you ask me the entire all of Southeast Asia, it is that larger civilization, the Bharatiya thought process. Otherwise, how could have Abhinav Gupta written about the same Nati Shastra while the same Nati Shastra was getting sculpted in Brihadeshwara temple, while Shantala was making all her Shilabalikes, Madanikes. So there is a connect and there is something that we perhaps have missed in connecting so let's connect the dots and like I said right in the beginning, I'm sure all your parents want you to be DRDO scientists, not me. So please find the connection between the art and the science and you'll realize that the world is a lot more worth living. I'm going to end with uh, one more kaka. Mankuti kaka. Uh, too much speaking, I've lost track. Anyway, that kaga is also about learning being a constant process. You are not to think that you've learned. There's nothing that is fully learned. You're always in the process of learning. Like I said, when I go and see TNC Taram, 
Each day is a new day because he acts like I have never acted before. He looks at me like I can't act at all. So, <laughs> so each day is a learning process and uh, I do hope that I have in some way made a difference to the lives of all those who are here. Endaro Mahanu Bhavalo, Andariki Vandanamu. There are a lot of people in front of me as well as next to me who are far more wise and knowledgeable than I am. But this is just sharing of experiences. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you very much, Madam, for giving us such rich insights across storytelling, Natya Shastra, and of course, cinema. Your second part was indeed a visual treat. The spellbound and the speechless audience is the evidence you've got. Thank you once again, Madam. Now let me invite Professor C.G. Venkatesh Murthy, Dean of Instructions, R.I. Mysore, to propose the vote of thanks. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. We have come to the last segment of the program. This is proposing the formal vote of thanks on the 61st Foundation Day of the Regional Institute of Education, Mysore. We were privileged to have Dr. Tessie Thomas, distinguished scientist, former Director General of Aeronautic Systems, DRDO, and the Project Director for Agni-4 Missile and Agni-5 Mission, Government of India, who was our chief guest this morning, who has left because she has another engagement we are thankful to Dr. Tessie Thomas for her presence and a wonderful lecture on the Sardar Panikar Memorial Lecture today, which she delivered. We are thankful to her. We are also thankful to Srimati Malvika Avinash, the renowned film personality, television artist, renowned classical dancer, noted columnist, and someone who spoke extensively on education, art, theatre, cinema, dance, intrinsity and their connections so lucidly and also gave a presentation, gave a demo and uh, some of her words are very, very relevant to all of us. We are thankful to you, uh, Srimati <laughs> Malavika ji, for your presence. We are indeed thankful to the office of the director of the NCRT there who have joined us online along with the other principals of other RIEs located at Ajmer, Bhuneshwar, Bhopal and Shillong. We are thankful to all of you for having joined, all of us. We are thankful to the Joint Director NCRT, Joint Director CIT, Joint Director PSS CIVE, who all have joined online. We are thankful to you. And we are indeed thankful to our esteemed principal, Professor Vaishri Khan, under whose directions and guidance the whole activity was conceived. We are thankful to you, sir, for having been an inspiration for all of us. This program was coordinated by Professor Kalpana Vedgopal, the head of Department of Extension Education. We are thankful to you, Professor Kalpana for planning this so meticulously. We had a number of friends from the press and media this morning who have made an extensive coverage of our program. We are thankful to all the press people and also to all the conveners of all the teams and committees who have taken care of every aspect of the program so meticulously. I am also thankful to all the colleagues of the RAE Mysuru for being a part of that, along with all the students from the DMS and then the RAE, the DCGC group, a big group which is sitting here. And I thank everyone who has been able to make this program a successful one. Thank everyone who contributed directly and indirectly. With that, we come to the end of the program. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, sir. Now let me call on my choir group to come over the dais for the national anthem. Jagannamana Adhinayaka Jayahim Bharat 